All right, welcome back to Ebony with Genghis Server 68. Very exciting news. Rostock Historic City is coming back. For those who haven't seen my video on historic cities, check it out. I'll put it in the description. But there's a couple different kinds of historic cities. And in my opinion, Rostock is the best. You can look at the buffs right there, 15. 15, 10, and negative 10. Uh, basically, there's a competition and you got to spend some money to get it. So this is very similar to the Alexandria competition, only for some reason it seems that Ebony loves uh, fragments now. So let's go in here and let's look at the historic city. So there are two historic cities. I don't know why they don't call the other one subsidy event, but this is the one we want to look at, historic city. And we're going to go into it. And basically these are the top 10 players right now. And I can go and see more of them somewhere here. Uh, where do I see more rankings? Here we are. So you can go down and see your ranking all the way down. You can also hide your info, which is kind of cool. Uh, that way, I guess if you're at the top and you don't want people to bump you, they don't know the next level of person. So they might be, let's say this person in 51st trying to get into 50th. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe it's actually someone way higher, but they're hiding their info and he doesn't know how high he has to go to spend to catch someone. So I guess you could do that. Uh, I kind of like that because especially for people in different time zones, I always feel like I get screwed because server reset is at 3 a.m. my time. So there's certain things that can happen. Like someone can bump you out of training day, troop training day or gathering day. They can call back all their farms at 2.59 a.m. my time and collect everything and send them back out at 301 things like that uh anyways those are all small things but it is nice that you can actually hide your info like that i wish they would do that on other things not that it really matters too much but anyways how to get them so basically the, you can get points in all sorts of things like this and it doesn't tell you how many points you get for each so that's kind of disappointing again ebony with no transparency i hate when they don't tell us this it's just like, oh, wow, I got 25 points. Oh, I got 25,000. I don't really know how they get there. So anyways, uh, let's look at the rewards. So these are daily rewards, which is pretty big. So if you finish first, seven days at 150 times 150 and 20 fragments and then dragon source those are really big rewards and it goes all the way down so even players in 1000th place get some rewards but you got to get in top 500 for a fragment and realistically so this is a five day event you have to finish in the top 50 at least one of those days and then top 100 four more days so this is not going to be easy to get and then if we look at here you need 30 fragments to get the city what is this epic city okay so if you don't get get it you can get all these other ones i hate other random but whatever what can you do about that eh? and then there's other cool rewards down there uh you have to spend money though basically you're not gonna luck out and get them especially uh it's the weekend now people tend to spend on the weekend more for uh get the weekend packs that come with it and you need 30 of these, so you can't get it all in one day. I don't know what redeem tips are. I guess it'll highlight the ones that you can get, depending on how many stone, how many fragments you have and that sort of stuff. Um, one other cool thing that did come out that I don't know if people caught was... How did I get there earlier? Right here. I'm just going to guess right now. These are the Shalons Continents. So... Right now, if you go to Shalons, you can't see the continents, but it looks like server continent one now goes up to 368. Last time, I think it was 290, 268, something like that. And this is a really big deal for some, but for continent one, that means we're going to get a couple powerhouse alliances in continent one now. Uh, RSP, that was formerly King Sing's alliance. And 
GOT Game of Thrones, that I think they're the two most powerful in Continent 2, what used to be, and now they've moved into Continent 1. And Peak of Glory, you could see, I would guess at the next Chalons or All-Stars, Sir Philip might end up in Continent 1, which will, you know, Continent 1 is becoming very uh, big and competitive now. Every alliance eventually makes their way to Continent 1. That's how the game works. They merge, right? Like it says, Server 2 to Server 368. But really, there's not 367 servers in there because there's so many that are merged. Like my server is 68901.36. And if you just assume most of them are like that, I know the ones that just merged, 12 and 54, that's four continents in one. So you could basically divide this by three and say that there's 100, low 100, right around 100 servers in continent one. At the higher levels, it's actually probably pretty accurate. Like uh, C3, that's probably actually about 240 servers, maybe 210 or something like that. But anyways, a little bonus information there. Good luck getting rose stock. It's going to be really expensive. I didn't even get in the top 1,000 for that Alexandria. And I coin a little bit. But I don't coin that much. I thought I'd maybe at least get top 1,000 for Alexandria, but I did not. So these rewards are uh, continent-wide. So you got to pony up, right? Because uh, like I said, continent one, if there's over 100, con 100 servers, you got to assume that each server has 10 people who are spending $100 a day. So it's going to be tough. Anyways, Genghis, server 68, like, subscribe, leave a comment.